Who came up with this idea? This is my thumbnail. Right, let me do my thumbnail right here, if you like. I don't think you guys realize how big this is that I'm previewing today. Oi! I just keep on going and going and going and going, still going. Oh man, like the size of my ship. What do you think I was going to say, man? <sighs> what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Break Me Up, Scotty. I'm Scotty. How are you watching? Beamus. Finally, it's super quiet in the office. That's because it's on a Sunday. Everyone's on freaking holiday. So I wanted to come down here and do a video for you. So there's no drilling. They've been drilling and renovating right below me for the last three weeks almost. It's crazy, man. They're probably going to continue it. So I got to shoot these videos as fast as I can. Sorry for the delay. And I'm going on tour. If you're watching this now, I'll be going to Temecula, California on the 24th. I'll be there on the 25th, 26th. Show with my dad on 27th, 28th, I fly straight to Reno, and then 29th, I'm back to Hong Kong. Maybe I should do a meet and greet. Would that be cool? You guys around there? Find me. I'll let you know more details. Follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook, which I'm a little bit slow to upload to. Anyway. Yo, look at this thing in front of me. This thing is a beast. This thing is huge, man. I haven't done a military set for a while. Sorry about that, too. And my buddy, homie Sean, has been gone. He left. Sean, you son of a bitch! Now he left a while ago, he went back to the state side. He's just doing his own thing. I'm here, I'm here, open the hatch. What? Rub the submarine, a lot. Oh. What's long and hard and full of semen and takes Scott both hands to grab, Das Boot. Well shit. I guess that's one way to get you in the video. At least you look better like that. You have to see your ugly mug on the camera. Then again, maybe I should change myself into a minifigure too. So look at there. Sean is back, guys. Anyway, today we're looking at this, another boat. This one is freaking crazy, man. So I built this over the last month and you wouldn't believe it. I was like almost done with this thing and I was carrying it and the thing fell apart. It like dropped about probably four, three to four feet. It was on a shelf and I was taking it down to add the final touches and the whole thing shattered. Gravity isn't just a rule, it's the law. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad to put back together, but you'll probably see from some details, the camera and stuff, there might be some missing pieces, and I have all the spares here. You left out the toilet. Ask me how I know. And the thing is, it's like, there are some that belong inside this thing, so maybe when I show it to you, we'll find it along the way. But yo, we're looking at Pandos' latest, greatest, biggest set, and they haven't released any of the other ones that we've seen before in the back of the catalog from the last panel set. Panos, what are you doing? We need those ones. Anyway, this is big, man. Super long. Let me just tell you what this product is. So you can go out and you can buy it. You can buy it from me, pickmeupscotty.com. Thank you for all you guys supporting the store. It was just still going. So I've been really busy with the store, updating new products on the store, all that stuff. You can certainly buy this anywhere else you want to buy. I know a lot of you guys are jumping onto Timu. Is that any good? Anyway, let's just check this out. So what are you looking at is from Patnos. They call this the Vic U-Boat, or V-I-I-C U-Boat Submarine. Vic U-Boat was a gay porn star in the 70s. This is the 7C U-Boat, which is better than 6C. 628011, 6,172 pieces. SS level. Why would they call it SS level? It's just, that's not right. Super shaft, secret sub, Slippery scuba? No, wait, that's a euphemism. Uh, never mind. And yes, I do have the box here. It's so damn big. I have to shoot it separately. Like this. So here is the book, which is super big. I like the design. And there's an SS level there in the back. Down here it says, the block unblock, whatever that means. It's got details about this submarine because me, not being a military guy, I have no idea what I'm looking at. But thankfully it's in English too. So I can show you a little bit there, what it looks like. And we're gonna break this thing down because, dude, this set has a lot of details, man. 
As far as reading the thing goes, it's fine. It's easy to read. You should have no problems. Now, before you go, no, military, I don't want to watch this thing. I'm not into it. Dude, I'm not a military guy either, but I like to build these things. I don't know why, but this one was a lot of fun to build. It was kind of gets repetitive in some spots, but let me tell you, stay, watch, because I'm going to show you the details on the inside. I might have to break out a special lens I haven't taken out for a long time, be able to get inside the set because it's freaking tight inside. World War II submarines were in fact very small. When they left port, a lot of times the bunks were stacked up with food and, and other stuff and sailors had to sleep in hammocks until they literally kind of ate their way into being able to use their bunks. Uh, these things, these submarines were really claustrophobic. Wait, claustrophobic? That's fear of Germans, Never mind. It's got so many intricate details. You might want to think about like, not even displaying it like this, like actually taking it all apart. We're making rooms out of this, seriously. You could totally make like a computer control panel station room thing. You don't have to build this whole boat because the pieces and the printed pieces are great. There are stickers with the set. The stickers are very minimal. There's only a few stickers and they didn't really even have to use stickers. There's so many printed pieces that make up for it. It's crazy, man. I agree with you. The detail of it is nice. Uh, like I always say with these sets, it's not exactly accurate, but it looks enough like the 88 that you kind of realize that's what it is. And that to me is the point. First things first, yes, you can take it off the stand. The stand is really nice. You can pick it up and carry it around like this. Do not hold it with one hand, which is exactly what I was doing. I was holding it like, like this going, oh, I'm going to put this piece here and I put pressure on it. This submarine can come apart, but it's locked on every section. You have to take pieces off to get in here. And they advertise you don't have to. Once you put it all together, you should be able to just take off the top and some of the sides and you can kind of like look in there. But if you really want to dig in there, you can, but you have to take off multiple little small pieces. So we're going to try it in different various ways with you. This might be a little bit longer the video, but it should be still fun. It's a big size. The stand is beautiful. That is a print along the bottom. Can you actually put this down without the stand? You could like this. There you go, that's without the stand. And as you can see, you do have some strings here. You don't have to use the strings. I just put them on just for this video. They're easy to put on, they're easy to take off as well. They have these little pipes that kind of like act as a rail here, a couple here, they're mostly rails. And then one more that goes on the back, which I did not put on, it kept popping the pieces off. All the propeller pieces or the rudder parts can pop off really easy. That's a, a, a one complaint about the set. As far as build goes, putting the whole thing together. You build them in sections, which is good. So you can take your time, enjoy each part, but it's very narrow and it's very thin when you're building it. You wanna like push on one side and it'll push to the other side and squeeze it. You might have that experience of like knocking things down. I kind of wish it was just a little bit wider. I might be crazy, but I would have liked to have seen it a bit wider so I can get in there and take a look at it and maybe be a little bit more of a sturdy build. Like I said, these things were small, even life-size, so for me, I'm kind of glad that they kept it realistic. Let's look at the stand. I don't even know where to put this thing. I'm like sliding it all over the place. The stand is the first thing you're gonna build. It's very easy and very fast to put together. Enjoy that moment because once you get in the submarine, this thing is big, man. You're gonna have to take your time with this. I like this stand. It looks like the sort of wooden stands that you see used for ship models. And I, I enjoy the way that it's, again, like I always say, evocative. Funny thing though, the box says it's U552, but the stand says U522. So it may not look like 6,000 pieces. Of course it's 6,000 pieces. It's German. It's bound to be over-engineered. If it was a Soviet sub, it would be 600 pieces and probably missing at least one hatch. And let's face it, if it was Polish, there would be screen doors. But trust me, man, each bag, you got lots and lots of little pieces, a lot. They're like small pieces, they're not big pieces. So it's not like a modular where you're putting like big chunks together and having fun. Man, you can be dinging quite a lot or sorting quite a lot for these pieces. And you see, just like I said, I forgot to put these pieces on here. I probably have to put like extra parts on here. I probably missed this in my shot earlier. I put that there. See, I'm already missing some parts. I, I thought I was had everything together. That's the bad thing about dropping this thing, man. I can't tell where parts have gone missing. We're just gonna look at the whole outside. Both sides do mirror each other, except this side has the anchor, which is pretty simple. 
I like the color of the submarine. The blue works really well with the gray, although it's very repetitive along the side. I like the detail and the look of it. And all these bar of gold pieces, you have to take all of them off if you want to split open this thing. And along the top are the little grill pieces. You have to take two of them off for each section. And then you have to pull everything apart. And there are Technic pieces that are holding it in. Still, don't trust it, man. This thing will fly off on you for sure. Be very careful with it. But I like the overall detail. And you actually have some stuff here along the top. You got the artillery gun there, which does swivel. It moves up and down. I really like the detail of that. I think it's pretty good. The deck gun is a 88 millimeter howitzer. It's the, the gun very widely used by the Germans uh, in the war. Uh, they put it on tanks, anti-aircraft guns, all kinds of things. It, now, in this case, it could be used as an anti-aircraft gun depending on how, how much it was able to move because that varied. Uh, but it was mostly intended to finish off ships that had been torpedoed but hadn't sunk. Because let's face it, you're not going to get credit for, for a ship until it's on the bottom of the ocean. So sometimes it would be torpedoed and sitting there and they would come out and finish it off. Don't get too excited, man. I know you like the size of this thing. Does that feel good? <laughs> then you got this middle section here with another gun. And it looks like two telescopes protruding out from there. And then the strings, like, do they use strings on submarines? I thought they had to go underwater and like submerge or are they like strong ropes? I don't know that. That's how well I know the stuff, man. Uh, the the strings, <clears throat> the wires, are antennas for the U-boat's high-frequency radios. The single bow wire was for transmitting, and the two going to the rear were for receiving. In World War One, they also served as deflectors for submarine nets, but in World War Two, nets weren't as widely used. Uh, the sawtooth on the bow, the front of the ship, was also intended to help cut the submarine nets, which again wasn't really an issue, but it had become part of the design in general by then, so they just left it. Got a little flag back there. You can put a figure here and here. And speaking of figures, this actually comes with 17 minifigures, a lot. We'll come up to those guys in the end. Stay tuned. They look absolutely amazing. Hopefully Sean can tell us more about them. Why don't we ever build something with mini female figures? Uh, never mind. I have no interest in a Louisa May Alcott set. Whatever. Now, the flag is uh, missing some insignia, but uh, that's a good thing. So tell me, my man, what would you like to see on that flag? You know what? Better not answer that thing. I'll just do this again. I love her. Kicking your ass. Everything else kind of repeats with all the grill pieces going all the way to the back. And it just looks like more hooks down here to hook onto the end pieces there. And, oh, it looks really good, man. I felt the strings were actually pretty okay. They, they're not like so in the way. It kind of gives the boat a nice look, but you can always just take those off. You don't want them. Now along the front here, you know what's cool is here? I thought this was like a design flaw. I'm like, oh, the thing opens up. Like, I don't think that's supposed to open up, but it actually does because inside you have some rockets that will, or missiles. Sean, where you at, man? I need you to describe this thing for me. Torpedos, ach du lieber. The torpedo tube hatches would actually retract backwards inside the hull. The design here is just so you can see them, which frankly is a compromise that I endorse. That will fire out. And it's on both sides too. And it really does have the missiles inside. You can build them and put them together. They can slide in there, but it's impossible to slide out here. You have to like get inside to push it out. So I'll show you those in a bit, but that was a cool little feature. These parts right here can pop off the little rudders. Be careful for that. Uh, those are diving planes to adjust the angle and depth of the submarine. The rudder is in the aft of the boat and controls the direction in which it is traveling. Well, excuse me, I'll just put you on the damn thing. There, you happy? You want me to flip you upside down right there? There you go. Drown in the water. Right along here, this part actually opens up like that. Uh... Hi, Scotty! This is too big, man. What are you going to do with me after the video? Are you going to sell me out? No. Oh. It figures the one time a set has a talking ass and I miss it. I mean a talking ass other than myself. Another missile does fit inside there. But again, you cannot get it out. If I roll this baby like that, you can see the propellers, the props, the rudders. But I did mention they can pop off very easily. So put those on last. In fact, just build them, put them aside. Don't even touch them until you're like fully finished with this build. And then you can put them back on. It's going to be much easier. Trust me. This thing is so long. It's not as long as the Titanic. Titanic's actually a little bit longer. This one is 
Let me see, it tells you right here. I can just do dimensions for you. It is 120 centimeters wide, 29 centimeters high, and 13 centimeters wide. There you go. Convert that yourself to inches, man. I'm on the side of the world. I brought this to the office, it was totally fine, but I can definitely see things starting to shift a little bit. So you wanna see the details, because the details on this thing is crazy. So they say you can take off this piece without having to do anything, but the easiest part first to take apart are the side panels. They come off on both sides. And these parts are actually all the last parts that you build. Now I'm kind of scared to touch this thing, man. That's what she said. Come on, boy. I'm just doing it by feel. There we go. Okay, so you build a bunch of these. These get repetitive, but these are the last part of the build. And, oh yeah, you know what? Was I missing any pieces? Definitely. Panels is, mm, seems like they do have missing pieces. So I did have some, but this is a very big set. Were they major pieces? Some were not, some I was able to hide, some you can't even see. There was one major, like a two by eight blue plate, but I kept building the whole thing and I was able to substitute it and you can't even see it, it's hidden. So if you're gonna buy this, specific set for me used. I might be missing a couple pieces. And the nose too, you might have not noticed it, but this side, the front, supposed to have the gray pieces that knobbed out. I think I lost those when I dropped it at home, so I gotta look for those ones. Those might be missing. But anyway, continuing on, we'll take all these sections or parts out. I don't wanna knock this thing down, man. I feel like I'm gonna destroy this boat again. Let's take this off, but of course you have the string. So yeah, I'm just gonna like, I don't know how to restring this thing again or retie it. There we go. Take this part off. That was easy. Easy peasy. I feel a little bit safer now. Oh, but see, this is attached to the rail. Now, gotta take this part off. There, like that. More of these. Oh, these parts might come off on you. Okay, so take that down. You can start to see slowly. There's detail there, a lot of detail. I was pretty impressed with the inside of this thing. So this one can come off as well. Oh, see, I'm breaking it apart right there. There we go. Oh, it might be easier just to pull it forward like that. There we go. That would have been easier. Just pull it forward like that. Don't be scared. It's like a crazy thunderstorm outside right now, guys. Okay, I think that's it. And now if I flip it to the other side, which I now have to be careful still. You can hear things rattling around inside too. Those are all the missiles that are like in their dock or whatever. Look at this thing. I had to hold this thing like a bazooka to flip it around. Oh, I'm so scared. This thing will crumble. So far, so good. And I have four little studs underneath so you can line it up to the stand so it's easy. So yeah, do this technique. Lean it forward. There you go. They all kind of mirror, so I gotta remember where these go, man. Same to here, move this one forward. So I like the design of that so far. So we wanna show this off to your friends and be like, look, I can open this up for you. That will take both of these walls of the rail, holding it there. All right. There. This one is slightly more unique. That's just a little bit of a real piece, but the majority of all those walls are all the same. You'll be like a factory worker. I was telling that to Chris. Dude, Chris, I feel like I'm in a factory right now, putting the back, so the side walls down because they do repeat. Oh, I just hate that it's so narrow and I can't show you all the details. This side, the rocket or the missile fell off, but it can slide onto here. Let's see if I can get back on. It's been a minute since I've done this thing. There we go, like that. This little thing here that you can not sure if you can see that there, yeah. It loads into the thing here and it shoots out. Now they say, see I can see that the, the the weight of this is like pulling it off. Oh, I forgot to pull one more, pull the side, one more here to pull it. There. Okay, so they say you should be able to take this whole top piece out for easy access inside. That's not gonna work, man. It's gonna be really tough to do it. I can try, but I just got this feeling like you don't want to. Oh, it's kind of coming off. It looks like it's gonna take part of the, the hallway doors for each of these off. 
Oh, this is the back side. No, that's not even working. I guess this side might be a little bit better. I'll try to do it like this. Because, oh, I guess you kind of can. Oh, I'm so scared to do this. Okay, well, that kind of worked. Kind of didn't. Let's put that there. Too many things going on. And this is supposed to be able to come off, too. Feels like it does not want to. Oh, there we go. Oh. Now, if I flip it like this, flip it like it's hot, you can start to see each section is totally different from one another. And we're gonna start with the front, I guess, and work our way back. So I told you, you'd have to take off each rooftop, but now we don't, you can take the whole thing off with one piece. It's still a little bit tricky, you gotta remember where everything goes. So you can see there's a lot of work in this, right? And you gotta take off all these, the gold bar pieces. So I can see the thing, you can see the tension and the pressure now. It's getting looser and looser, so I have, still have to be careful. It's still being held down by Technic pieces, and it's also being held down by, the, by a couple of tiles underneath. So you still have to flip the whole thing upside down and get under this thing and take out a couple more pieces. This is called the true breakdown. It's gonna suck putting this all back together again. Okay, so if I take this here, I'm gonna move the stand out of the way. It might be easier for me to navigate this thing. Looks like a blue whale now. Oh, let me take off the propeller. It's gonna be a lot easier to take these off than even the back ones. See, they come off like so easily. Much easier just to take these off. The desk is a mess. You guys can't see it. Do I roll it here? Much easier now. This is where each section is locked by these pieces. Tiles, you can take those off, see that? There, 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 and I guess there. We're just getting started, guys. Did I take this one off? Oh no, I didn't take this one off yet. One more, there, okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. Here's the boat. Wow, and work your way aft. Now I can show you clearly how it opens up here. And here, ah, there's the missiles are all coming out now. Fire! Torpedo, tow this Fire. fish. Sometimes they get kind of stuck. Okay, so you get two rockets, missiles, bombs. There's actually four compartments. You open up here and there. Like that, and also everything else is printed that you're seeing so far. I even forgot which like, what are stickers, but there's not a lot. Let's see if I can remember. I remember the stickers were more towards the end, but this is very cool. And the design of this, like each section, is really solid, except this might come off just because it opens and closes. But to be honest with you, once it's all together, it's really sturdy. It's like really secure. When you're building it, though, it might be a little bit frustrating. I think that's what the SS level stands for. You gotta have some patience, but the other rooms are very hollow along the top, so they can squeeze and break apart. So just be careful for that. But otherwise, individually, super strong, super sturdy. It's pretty cool. I like the shape and design. Wow. Okay, now I'll refer to the manual of what the next room is. This one is the torpedo compartment at the bow. Where is the arrow for your bow? I give up. Bow, I get it. Damn it, you're not here with me. This is what I get. You have to keep making fun of me. Again, there you go. Enjoy that. If I were to put the top section back on, but now I have to take off the grill pieces in order to show that, this is gonna be such a messy desk and it sits up here. So if I were to put this piece back on here, there's a place that the missile can kind of sit up here and slide on. The torpedo loading mechanism is actually pretty accurate. That's how they moved them from storage into the firing tubes. They would have those sort of hoists and they had the tracks uh, like you would see in a garage uh, for doing engine hoists and things of that nature. So that's actually, again, nicely evocative. Or torpedo. Torpedo. Duh, Scotty, the torpedo. Okay, torpedo, I gotta remember that. So you sit the torpedo here and it goes into that slot. I didn't realize here along the top, you push down on it, you can open up there, and that is a torpedo inlet. I guess the torpedo can go in through there. I guess these are beds right there that you're looking at, and it kind of does fold up. 
And there's even more compartments underneath. The bunks, or racks, did actually fold up out of the way uh, and were actually on top of the torpedo storage. So you have to remember that, you know, obviously space was at an incredible premium on these vessels. Oh, there are the other two missiles there. So there are all four that come with this thing. I've already forgotten. There's the other two. So you can take those out if you wanted to. That's a lot of detail, man. Well, the first room only, like, whoa, you know? And if you look along the back there, you have like the fire hydrant and control panels and more piping along the wall, all prints so far. And there's a door at the back here that opens and closes. That will go into the next section, just so you can see right there. Very nice. So the next room here is the captain's lounge and officer's lounge and radio room and sonar room. The captain's stateroom and the officers eat in a wardroom, but I can't really expect you to know that. That's just, it's nautical stuff. You got the officer's bed, toilet, yeah. And it looks like a little chill area, dining area. That's very tight, but you can sit a figure down there. And there's a closet right next to that super small table that does not open up. And then you got the radio room and the sonar room. Everything that you see is a print. And on the opposite side is the captain's bed. It's very hard to see from this angle. It's also tricky to see from this angle. It's gonna be really hard to appreciate unless you either buy the set or I'll throw my camera lens inside so you guys can see better. I like the colors and I like the look of this and I just really enjoy all the prints. The second room has more prints than the first room and you got that little toilet right there. It doesn't open up or anything, but the door opens into it. On ships, they're not toilets, they're heads. And yes, there was generally only one or two of them. Also, notice there's no shower. The control for the sonar and the radio. I really love those prints. If you just need prints, this is a set that is totally worthwhile. And like I mentioned too, break this down, break this whole set down into a diorama. I think it'd be really cool, man. You don't have to actually display the whole thing as one. There's actually more bunk beds on this side too. So that's pretty cool. And you got the hatch there to open up to go into the next room. And sometimes each section will have the decoration on the opposite side. So this should be connected to the next room to see the details, but you can see it right here. Look at all those valves and very cool. That's a very small hatch though. Figure can't fit through that thing. That'd be super tight. So scaling is probably all off on this thing. Uh, no, the, actually the hatches were quite small uh, because the smaller they are, the stronger they would be because they're designed to prevent flooding, things of that nature. You, you had to be able to compartmentalize, hence the word compartment, in case of flooding or damage or things of that nature. But it still looks really cool, right? Okay, now we're getting like really detailed. So I'm gonna pull this off here. What room is this, Mr. Manuel? This is the dispatching or command room. Oh, so this is the section where on the top you have the periscope and they call it the commander's cupola, cupola. Oh, I should, I should have read this in the manual first. The details in here is insane. Right away on the right side, you got all these pipes and crazy stuff going on. Even I don't know what I'm looking at. You make your way down, there's a ladder to go up into that section, which there is actually a hole right here that goes up into the cupola. I'm saying that right or wrong. Coppola? No, cupola. Uh, the upper structure on the submarine is actually called a conning tower. I know, I'm gonna get trashed by you guys. I'm getting, probably getting trashed by Sean right now. As you walk on through, there's more valves on this side. Looks like characters or figures can sit down there and look at all those details along the walls. We haven't even gotten to the stickers yet. Um, I'm not certain, but I think those are ballast valves for adjusting the buoyancy of the boat to control its depth. You could either let the air out and it would sink or shoot more air in and it would rise. And you got more like machineries on the side and all sorts of stuff on the floor. It's very tight, but it's crazy. That's why like, oh, you really, really appreciate it as you're building it. But if you want to show it to a friend or like, like, yo, this looks so good. Like, look at that. You can't even tell on camera because it's so tight and clustered inside. I just wish you're able to like look inside that a little bit more. It does have a little periscope piece hanging down there to look up, which is pretty neat. And then you start to go towards the hatch here where you got more valves. And when you open it up on the other side, you got more pieces right there. And yeah, those are all the technical things that you use. Still not enough, man. Be very careful how you handle the sucker. The other downside for something like this is, is trying to get your figures in there. You're gonna to have to use tweezers or try to push them into the studs. 
but I can see it being very frustrating, especially into your, in, if you're into the detailed stuff like that, of putting guys inside and want to shift things around or something pops off, yeah, you're kind of screwed. And everything else stove, it's, you know, on the sides are all repetitive, how you build it. Once they're together, it's very thick and solid. As you're building it though, there's a chance it might break off. And also like getting the wall pieces on can be a little bit crazy. Like you're gonna have to do like build these and then flush them in and then you're pushing it all together and you gotta push it tight and then it goes BAM! Yeah, that's the only downside. Okay, next room. I still don't know where these two missing pieces go. Where'd they go, man? Ah, uh, yeah, okay, I found one missing piece. There's like two more pieces, I don't know where they go. One's like a control panel that fits in one of these rooms. Oh, I see it, I see it! Okay, now just one piece down. I'm not gonna worry about that one. I just wanna get this one here. How do you get it in there? Now that I got everything stuck inside. Oh, pry everything off like that. And then put it back in. There we go, I found it guys. Okay, we're good. 96% of the stuff is put back together. This room is the crew accommodation. It's going back to simple. So we just went from like simple to complex, really crazy complex, and now we're back to simple. This is simply just the beds for the figures and it looks like they can kind of fit in there. We'll see if we can fit the guys in there later. We've got some cabinets along the top, but those will be covered by the wall on the side. So you have to be careful you don't put too much stuff in there. You can probably put a couple objects in there, but probably not much. Just leave them alone. This is just display, yo. There's like two benches in the middle there. Then we come to the door here and the door decoration is really nice too. No stickers there. And there's the kitchen, very small. And you have another toilet here. The door doesn't open up unless you open the other door. And that's it. It's so tiny, it's so small, but you need a crew accommodation for your guys to live in this place. We're coming down to the wire. I think we're gonna get a little bit looser here. We'll pry this off. Okay, this one is simply the engine room. This is actually really cool. If I go like that, if you look there, all those green pieces, those are most of the stickers. After that, there's only a couple more, which is being used here on the curve. And I think there might have been like one or two control panels earlier that were stickers, but that's it. It's only, it's, it's only this room, the majority of them. So you open the door and you go inside and I like the green look of these. More valves there and all the little dials and pieces. And mine might be like flipped upside down or I wasn't quite sure which way to put them up. I'm doing everything in low light condition, so it's harder for me to see, but you get the idea. And when you come down the corridor, you can certainly put a couple figures there, like they're working on the engine room. I just, the detail on those is crazy. There's so much stuff there. That's what I mean. Like, it looks really good. It looks like a factory. Like, that's what I mean. Like, you can take these pieces out and use them as different elements for yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a submarine. But I'm just saying that, man. If you're just like, you want to get into military builds, you want to try something big, but then you want to make, get all the use out of it, this is a really great set because you can pull all these stuff out and like, make something out of it, right? And there you go, that's pretty much it for the engine room. It is detailed, but small at the same time. It's like, man, Panos didn't have to go this hard to make details on the inside, but they decided that they really wanted to. Then last but not least, you got this section where we did take off the top, so it looks a little bit funky there. This one is the torpedo compartment at the tail. Stern! An electromechanical compartment. At least they're detailed about what it is. There are some dials there before you go into this room. Once you open the door here, it's just all valves, wheels, and more dials, more printed pieces. Absolutely amazing with the detail there. I really like all of that. And if that wasn't enough for you, there certainly was enough in the, all the other rooms too. You got the hatch at the very end here for the last missile that I was talking about, or the last torpedo that's supposed to go out. And what just fell down? Oh yeah, sometimes you might find a loose piece here or there back in whatever that is and you can get it out here but it is tight to fit it when you put the shell and everything back on and try to you know don't be playing with this thing man but it's very cool that they included all that right now i have the daunting task of putting this all back together but let's take a look at the figures sean help me out man look at all these guys it's like a new bts band lots and lots of guys to look at the best to the worst so Sean, let's check these guys out. Why are none of them blonde? This does not seem accurate. There's a lot of them. So let's just look at these guys right here. And let me just tell you, they look really good, man. 
the two commanders, I think. I love the details on their hats and the details on their shirts, all the emblems, all that kind of stuff, and on their legs as well. For all the guys, there's very minimal printing on the back. It's just like the lines in their shirts and stuff. We got no time, we gotta move on. Actually, for me, they look enough like real life to let you know what they are. And that's the important thing we always say with these sets. So these four guys that you're looking at, their hats look better than the ones that are coming up. So I guess these are like the second in command. And some of them had headphones on, like headpieces. Should they be more to the side? Those are headphones, right? They look really good though. And the caps look amazing. Again, same deal with the printing. Each one is slightly different except for two, the same shirts. But man, they look really, really good. They're just not quite standard figures. These guys also have the similar cap without the gold emblem on it. However, they're wearing like life jacket type thing. They look really good, right? Jeez, and I like their expression. All their expressions on each guy is pretty much different. Now, people didn't normally wear life jackets unless they were on the deck while the boat was surfaced, but it's a nice detail to see and it provides a bit of variation. For the guys in this row, Again, the outfits are slightly different. Even the guy with the four pockets, one of them is kind of crooked. That's pretty good, man. And yeah, just look at them. Just admire them because they really look great for what they are. Finally, the last row, you got the, the crazy bunch here. To me, the guys in the back row are the most interesting. One's wearing a diaper, God knows why. One's set for casual Friday. And the other guy seems way too happy about his receding hairline. I don't understand these things. But overall, they are definitely interesting and impressive, uh, just not blonde enough. I knew I shouldn't have trusted you, you lying sack of who? Crazy, right? So my submarine is all apart still, because I'm gonna leave it like this to save some time on the shooting and the editing, all that stuff. I'm gonna get all the detailed shots for you guys. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. Screw it, we're gonna speed things up. So there you go. Absolutely crazy thing of a set. If you're into military, go grab it. If you just want to build something that has a lot of details and give it to someone, it's an amazing set too. So, that was fun. I will get on more military stuff for you guys. There's a lot and I have some older jets I even have, have not had time to get to. I'm so sorry. But thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, you guys. Break me out. <sighs>